Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Hybridicious episode 4. So this episode I'm going to show you my favorite skill team, one of my favorite teams as well, and the team which I used to get the majority of my compilation goals. So in net I went with DeSantis and in my opinion he is the most consistent keeper in the Serie A and that's why I prefer him over Marchetti. DeSantis rarely ever makes a mistake. I've used him for over 40 games now on two accounts and he has yet to make an error which I would remember. Marchetti was clumsy at times, DeSantis never fumbles the ball, barely parries the ball so that doesn't lead to any rebounds. Very good in one on one situations, and he's also very heroic in some games, as he has saved me from a few losses with around 9 to 10 saves and a 10.0 rating. So, overall, for a discard price, he is well worth those coins. And next, we move on to the left central back, and in this position, I went with Benatia, one of the most underrated defenders in this game, if not the most underrated defender in this game. 91 marking and 91 stand tackle paired with a high defensive work rates. So that's all you need to know. This guy is a complete beast. He's also fairly strong, solid in the air, and his pace is more than enough. But I am subject to a lot of pace abuse, so I decided to go with someone a bit faster right beside him with Bocchetti. Now, Bocchetti has 76 sprint speed in game, high defensive work rate as well, so he's always back on defense, a very reliable tackler, and very solid in the air. For around discard price, he's well worth his coins, and one of my favorite defenders as well, definitely one of my favorite non-rare defenders. And moving on to the fullbacks, we start off with Angboa. Now, I could have gone with Mario Fernandez, but I decided to use Angboa as someone made a suggestion telling me that he's one of the best fullbacks in this year, and after using him for around 11 games, I completely agree. He is such a beast in game, so underrated in this game. Uh, the thing that really sets him apart is his physical stats. He's fast, he's strong, he's agile, great jumper, great stamina. And he also has 79 marking, which is really surprising for a silver right back. Now, another great stat of his is his high defensive work rate, as he's always back on defense. And he also has a decent long shot paired with 3 star skill moves. For 5,000 coins he's fairly expensive, but if you do have the coins I would definitely recommend him as he was a very fun player to use on this team. And finishing off the defense we have Fabio, not too much to say about him as he is a very popular player and I assume the majority of you guys have tried him out. 3 star weak foot, right footed, decent long shot so you can cut in and shoot and medium medium work rate so he doesn't really push up too much which is useful. And then we move on to the midfield and we start off with Tarapt, one of my favorite 5 star skill players in this game. Probably my favorite as he does have 5 star weak foot and in my opinion that's what sets him apart from every other 5 star skill player in this game. He's agile, he's a great passer, great shooter, can finish on both feet which is just what makes him one of my favorite players in this game. And he's also a terrific dribbler. The only downfall is that you have to convert him from a center attacking mid to a center mid. And those cards are fairly expensive. I'm not sure how much the team of the air crash has affected consumables. But I would definitely recommend changing him to a center mid as he works wonders in that position. And then we move on to the center mid. I decided to go with a defensive midfielder in this team as, in my opinion, every skill team needs a defensive midfielder. There's no point in having a bunch of 5-star skill players when you can't actually get possession of the ball. And Williams is great when it comes on defense. Low high work rates, always back on defense. 86 stand tackle. He's not as fast or as strong as he was last year, which is really disappointing as it seems he has nerfed his physical stats but overall he is a solid player once again the only downfall is that you have to convert him from a central defensive mid and then we move on to the final midfielder with eduardo another player you have to convert once again i would recommend doing so and i will show you a tip how to save money at the end of this team introduction overall eduardo definitely one of my favorite players in this game I didn't like him in previous FIFAs, but in this year, I'm not quite sure why I do like using him, but I do prefer him over the likes of Jatson, Alberto, even Ronaldinho, which is ridiculous. Uh, he has great dribbling, decent pace, great passing, and a solid finisher. Only downfall is that he sucks when it comes to his right foot, so shoot with his left and you will most likely score. And then we move on to the attack, and here we have my favorite silver 5-star skill player with Kelvin. He has some ridiculous in-game stats. I believe 95 agility and 88 dribbling, that is insane, pair that with 5 star skill moves and his left foot on the right side and you have a very fun player to use. Now he does go for around 36,000, I believe he has gone down in price since the team of the year crash. 
Uh, you guys have to take in mind that I bought this team prior to the Team of the Year release, so all these players are obviously a lot cheaper now. But Danielinho goes for around 80, 90,000 when I checked, and he is a way better than Danielinho, so I would definitely recommend him for that price tag. And then we move on to Yaya, originally a center attacking mid converted to a striker, and there's really no surprise why. Six foot three, 83 strength, a great, great striker medium low work rates which is really good for a striker in a 4-3-3 formation because he doesn't go back on defense but he also doesn't go up too much on offense so he's kind of like a false nine he doesn't go up too much but he's there in the middle great distributor decent passer good dribbler some people do compare him to ibra but the difference between him and ibra is the fact that ibra has around 80 something agility and yaya's is only 60 so that is a distinct difference as agility does play a huge part when it comes to skilling of course five star skill moves really really not decisive on his weak foot um, he doesn't score too many on his weak foot. I haven't really took too many on his weak foot because I prefer shooting on his stronger foot. But from what I can say, he has a very powerful shot. I believe 90 shot power and 79 long shots in game. So if you do have an opportunity to take a long shot, do not be afraid. And we move on to the final player with Asiadi. Once again, a very solid player. Not too much to say about him. He's fast. He's agile. I believe he has 92 acceleration, which allows him to get past defenders really quickly. Great skiller, good finisher, and overall for around discard price, you cannot go wrong. So overall, this team was very solid. The defense was very reliable. I did not concede too much. The midfield was very strong, and the attack was also very fun to use. Now, if you do want to save a little bit of coins, maybe you don't have enough to afford the entire team, I would suggest taking Angbo out for Mario Fernandez, who is a Brazilian right back in the Russian league. Goes for around 400 coins, so he's fairly inexpensive. And not only do you save the 5,000 coins on Angba, but you also don't have to convert Carlos Eduardo to a center mid as Carlos Eduardo would get two strong links from the uh, the Russian league and I believe two Brazilian links. And in result, he will be able to have nine chemistry as a center attacking mid. So right there, you save yourself around 13,000 coins, which is not too bad. And now we move on to the goals. Alright, so I'd like to start off by thanking you guys for all of the recommendations on the last episode. I believe I asked you guys how long you want these episodes to last, and the majority of the recommendations were around 8 minutes, which is perfect. That's what I'll strive for, so expect episodes between 7 to 9 minutes, and I believe that's a lot more practical as opposed to 15 minute episodes. And what's that Aguero? Suck it, Benatia just completely eats you, get out of my house. As you guys can see, Benatti only has 66 pace, but 91 stand tackle never misses. His strength is just overpowering, and Aguero just got shit on. Moving on to other recommendations, I believe you guys gave me more suggestions for hybrids. Now, unfortunately, university starts in... I have my first class in 14 hours, so I don't have any more time to play FIFA. But if you guys do follow me on Twitter, I might start making hybrids and just posting them without making hybrid dishes episodes. So if you guys are interested in making a hybrid, I might just post one on Twitter randomly. And I will obviously have no desire to make a team or make an episode about it but you guys can feel free to try those out um, and I think that might work out a bit better so I can please everyone and obviously I can't make all these hybrids because I have around 50 suggestions and realistically speaking I will not be making 50 hybridacious episodes unfortunately this year so um, I might start doing that uh, when it comes to goals, you guys asked me to show more goals and less screen time introducing the team, which does make sense, but you guys have to consider that these are the best goals I score with this team. These aren't just random goals, which I score in around four games like some people do. These are the absolute most quality goals I score in around 10, 11 games. And I'm only showing you guys the highlights because I value your time and I'm not going to waste your time showing you guys a shitty putback goal, which you can score against any team. So... I'm showing you guys high quality goals as a result you see less goals but in my opinion it's more entertaining. With that being said I hope you guys have yourself a wonderful day and a good new year.